reaching, spiritual reaching, souls we're seeking, worshiping the Lord. Welcome to Union Baptist Church. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. All over this sanctuary, we give the Lord the honor, the praise, and the glory from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. He is worthy to be praised. This time last Sunday, we was right around the corner at the 7 a.m. hour. Amen. Worshiping with the St. Matthew Baptist Church as we celebrated the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ. And now we've made ourselves back here to 1137 Kitchen Street. Amen. That we might do the same thing. And that is to lift up the name of Jesus. The psalmist says, oh, clap your hands, ye people of God, and shout unto the Lord with the voice of the trial, for he shall subdue the people under his feet, and all the nations shall bow down to him, for he has chosen an inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob, of whom he has loved. God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of the trumpet. Oh, sing praises unto God. Sing praises, ye saints of God. Sing praises unto the King. For the Lord is a great God. And all the nations shall bow down unto him. Oh, thank you, Psalmist, for giving us our call to worship on this glorious morning. And it is my prayer. Now that we would use this song, let it marinate in our hearts as we make ready to give God the best of our service. I heard somebody say years ago, ain't no need of going to the bank to draw out anything if you haven't put anything in. And so it is with worship. If you want to get something out, Lord have mercy, you got to put something in. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Oh, give him a hand clap of praise. Oh, give him a hand clap of praise. For the Lord is good and his mercy endureth to all generations. All right, gentlemen, we're waiting for you now. Come on and light us a good fire. A good fire is just what we need by this time. And we on our way. Amen. Walk with me Walk with me Lord Walk with me While I'm on this 
He'll take and shield thee. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thou will find a solace there. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus, for being this solace. Yeah. Yeah. Something that soothes and something that alleviates pain. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, our Father. Thank you. Thank you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh, we yes. come today in the best manner that we know how. Yes. Looking towards the mother dust from whence we came. Yes. But we're looking up to you, O oh Lord, for all our help come from you. Yes. We thank you, our Father, thank for you. being so good to us. Yes. Thank you for laying down on your bed. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for the cover that we pull over this old fever body. Yeah, Lord. As the old patriarch said that it wasn't our whining sheep. Yeah, yeah. But here we are, Lord, standing here on, on you, oh Lord. Yeah, yeah. We are standing here, Father God, in time, but we are calling out to eternity. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. I know, I know that I'm right because the scripture say you are from everlasting to everlasting. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Thank you right now, Lord, you. because before that was a when and a where, yeah, yeah. a who and a what, yeah. you was already here. Oh, yeah. But we realize that you do not live in time, but you live in eternity. Yes. Here we are right now, kind Father, standing here, O oh Lord, in weakness. Uh -huh. Here we are, Lord, in weakness, O oh Lord. Yes, yes. But we're leaning on omnipotent. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know I can lean on you, Lord. I know I can lean on you. I've been leaning on you over four score years. Yeah, yeah. And you never gave away. Yes, the old sir. prophets lean on you. Yes, sir. Thank you right now, O oh Lord. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for uh, food that you gave us. Yes. Put on our table. Yes, sir. I heard that the children of Israel was in the wilderness for 40 years. Yes. And they had never missed a meal. Yes. And here I am, Lord, don't live over four school years. Yes. And I hadn't missed a meal yet. <laughs> thank you, Lord, for thank being you. so good to us. Thank you. Forgive us for our many sins and our shortcomings. Yes. And every evil that is in our throat. Yes. We thank you right now, Lord. Uh -huh. Thank you, Lord, for being who you are. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. You are our everything. Yes, sir. Oh, Lord, thank you, Lord, because to the Christian, oh, Lord. Yes. To the, to, to the Christian, Lord, you are the pilgrim staff. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, to, 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 to all of us, Lord, you are our Savior, oh, Lord. Yes. Oh, Lord, you are our all in all. Yes. You, oh, Lord, in our pilot. Uh -huh. You are the, the pilot compass. Yes, sir. You are the traveler's map. Yes. Thank you right now, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, look on those that are in the hospital, oh, yes. Lord, and those that are in, incarcerated. Yes. Look on them, oh, Lord, and have mercy on them. Yes. Look on this man, oh Lord, that you got standing here that's going to give your word today. Uh, yeah. Oh Lord, I pray that you will continue to shoe his feet with long traveling. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for the word that he's going to give us today. Yes, sir. Have mercy right Have now. Have mercy, Lord. But Lord, let it touch somebody hard yeah. or somebody's spirit yeah. that it might come crying, I yield, I yield, yeah. and I cannot hold out in the long. Oh, yeah. Because I know your word will stand when the world is on fire. Oh, yeah. Thank you right now, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless this deal, Lord. Amen. Bless Amen. this little light of mine. Well, I'm going to live. Oh, this little light of mine And I'm gonna let it shine Well, now this little light of mine Yeah, I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine Light 
this little light of mine. Yeah. I'm gonna let it shine. Well, this little light of mine. Yeah. I'm gonna let it shine. Yeah. Now this little light of mine. Whoa. Yeah. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Pray to God that you're in the process, amen, of transforming your home, amen, into a living sanctuary so you can feel, amen, what we feel. With that said, we're going to pause at this moment because it might be some first-time visitors, amen, who are sharing with us whether you were personally invited or you just took it upon yourself to come and be with us. Either way, we're just glad to have you, and we just want to acknowledge your presence if you are sharing with us as a first-time visitor. Will you please stand if that be the case? Any first-time visitors? Amen. Thank God that we're all among ourselves. We're family, and now we're ready to move forward. We're going to turn things over to Brother Parker, and he's going to bring us some announcements, and then I'll come back with a few more. We are worshiping the spirit of giving, and we are on our way. Amen. All right. Welcome to Union Baptist Church, a friendly church with the friendly pastor. Did you know that April is recognized as National Stress Awareness Month? To bring attention to the negative impact of stress, managing stress is an essential component of a healthy lifestyle. Now, your UBC news announcements. The Focus Ministry, a.k.a. The Singles Ministry, is rolling with another session this Tuesday, April 9th at 7 p.m. here in the Union Baptist Church Fellowship Hall. With guest speaker, Macon Native, graduate of the Northeast High School, a.k.a. Raider Nation, mm-hmm, 
Pastor Christopher Cabinets of the New Hope Baptist Church of Macon, Georgia, aka the City of Hope. Pastor Cabinets has many accolades and has served his community well throughout the years. He is certified in anger management and has a bachelor's degree in pastoral care. He also continues to serve his community with a program called Heal the Hood. For more info, contact Amy Brazil or Harriet Davis. And if you so happen to miss these announcements, visit our website at ubcmaking.org. They'll be posted under the announcements section. Well, that's all for your UBC news for the week. Now back to your worship experience. few the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our hands and we're gonna congratulate our own Reverend uh, Wendell Douglas Pitts amen uh, amen amen he he was given amen the MLK drum majors award for his contribution in music Amen. That spans over a lifetime, starting at the tender age of 11 years old. Amen. We thank God and we salute you. Amen. For the award that you were presented a few days ago. Many other men and women were honored in different categories. And so we thank God that we have, amen, one of Macon's best. Amen. When it comes, amen, to music. Don't forget, we've placed, amen, a real nice, amen, clear farm out front in the foyer. So when you have to make a last minute announcement and give it to me in print, amen, you don't have to put it on a napkin or tear off a piece of the program or something or grab something out your pocketbook, amen, uh, uh, and try to give it to me. And then I can't halfway read it anyway. Hallelujah. So if you're, if, 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 uh, a last minute announcement come upon you and you need to give it to the usher so they can give it to me. They're right out there in the usher station. Amen. Do know this coming Saturday, this coming Saturday at 12 noon, our Sunday school enrichment ministry will be sponsoring a spring picnic, a spring picnic. Amen. This coming Saturday at Lake Tobasaki. Uh, Safke, and uh, it'll be at 12 noon until a little longer after that, and you're welcome, amen. See anybody on the Sunday school staff, starting with the superintendent, Brother Marion Brown, and they can give you the tickets, per se. I know they've been passing out tickets, but even if you show up without a ticket and you tell them you're part of the union, uh, nobody's going to bother you from that perspective. All right. On next Sunday, we're on our way right around the corner to the Healing Temple Church family uh, to be a part of the installation service for our own Reverend Carlos Burnett. They called him a few months ago to serve as their pastor, and it is only right for us to be there to share, amen, in that grand occasion. Dinner will follow that service, but it'll start at 2 p.m., We'll get the spiritual food first, and then we'll get the physical food. And then on the third Sunday, amen, at 2 p.m., on the third Sunday of this month at 2 p.m., we are invited across Sherlin Drive to the St. Luke Baptist Church family to share in with them in their church anniversary. So next Sunday, the second Sunday, and then the third Sunday, amen, we're looking forward to sharing with those two churches. We had a grand time this past Monday uh, in the gymnasium. We had what was called a spring break kickoff. Uh, all last week, our children were on spring break, and some of them are probably even right now on vacation, amen, or should I say spring break with their family before they go back to school on tomorrow. So we want to shout out to all of you that made uh, last Monday, uh, amen, a great success. Last but not least, uh, on uh, April the 23rd through the 25th, we'll be making ready to have our annual spring revival. Our annual spring revival, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, just three days, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, April 23, April 24, April 25, and we'll be starting at 6.45 p.m. We'll give you a list of the speakers 
and the guest solos. We won't have any choirs on duty. We're trying something a little different. We'll have the preacher, and then we'll have a guest soloist for each night. We'll give you that information, amen, on next week as we wrap things up. Well, with that said, I have one or two other announcements, but I give them a little later so we're not crowded with announcements and can't keep up. We're going to go ahead nine pause and make ready to worship in the spirit of giving. Amen. So those of you that are going to help us in that area. Good morning, Union Baptist. It's time again for our, um, for our offering. I want to ask all my worshipers on my right and my left to please rise and just follow the direction of the gathered here because we realize that you are the one and only true God. Father, we realize that all blessings is in your hand. Father God, we just come right now just thank you for this day. Father, we thank you for this uh, just another opportunity to return a portion of what you've given us. Father God, we pray now we ask your blessings on all those that gave and all those that have a desire to give. Father, we pray now that you just hold us all closer to you. Father, we pray now that this offering be used in any way you see fit to uplift your kingdom. Rest this blessings and all blessings in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise as you go to your seat. All over the book of Psalms, it says, oh, clap your hands. Amen, ye saints of God. Don't ever get weary. Amen. Clapping your hands for the Lord. Amen. You know, it's amazing how things, how God just bring things together. He bring visions together. Uh, our uh, our uh, theme for this year is Visa, uh, which has to do with vision, information, strategy, and action. And then we have a sub-theme called making, making Room for New Wine. Because Jesus told us no man put new wine in the old wine skin lest it burst the wine skin and the wine spill on the ground and then it becomes of no value. 
And one of the things I pulled from that verse was that Jesus was telling us that every now and then we need to we need to modify church ministry. We need to recognize that some programs that have been going on for 30 and 40 years need to be deleted uh, so other new ideas and fresh ideas can come forth. I'm looking at this month being uh, the month where you're dealing with stress. I'm looking at the Macon Telegraph uh, that I held on to a week ago, and it's talking about mental health issues and all the things that making teenagers are dealing with in this day and time and how you know they're just under a lot of stress and a lot of pressure uh, we've had young children come down uh, after sermons and acknowledge uh, the trouble that they're going through even to the point where they wonder if life is worth living and so it's been a lot of things going on as it relates to our children and with our children coming down and with the making talent. And you know, our school system can't do but so much because, you know, you have certain laws you have to go by. Uh, but there are certain things the church can do that the school can't do. There are certain things the school can do that the church can't do. And with our young people, not just children, but even young adults, with everybody under so much stress and just crying for help, We've had a lot of men and women that have responded. Uh, they've been calling me saying, Reverend Pastor, what can we do? Uh, we've got to come up with some strategy. Now we're back to visa, vision, information, strategy, and action. And so I'm proud to announce that we have a collection of men and women, including my son, David Jr., who have uh, volunteered their services to start a ministry called HOPE, amen, a ministry called HOPE, the acronym Helping Others Progress Effectively. And they're ready, amen, to launch out into the deep and start ministering to our young people with your consent as parents. Uh, they'll be providing uh, counseling and other things that they can do uh, to help you and especially our single mothers who feel overwhelmed. You don't have the help uh, of their father to help you with the children and you about to pull all your hair out uh, because you can't uh, get a grip on what's going on. And so some of them are here this morning. Uh, will you all stand, uh, who, who, whoever you may be, amen, I see two, but it's at least about eight of them and maybe more, amen. And they're going to be, uh, uh, they'll be over in this room right next to, to us, the overflow room, uh, to just uh, give you some forms and to give you some additional information. I can't stand here and tell it all, but it's going to be good. And if we don't help but one teenager, it's going to be a successful program. Amen. They're going to make themselves available free of charge. Amen. To use their expertise. A a amen. To just help us do what we can as a church. The, the, the ministry of the church, it is what it is. We just can't run from what God is calling on us to do. Our main focus is to tell you about Jesus and to help you make it to heaven. I ain't going to ever lose sight of that. I know the first mission of the church is to show you how to live for God so you can make it to heaven. But there are some other responsibilities that the church have while we're down here on earth waiting to get to heaven. Hallelujah, somebody. And so we're going to do our job and do our part to help provide the kind of services. They'll be meeting on bi-monthly uh, bi basis on Monday afternoons and whenever other time they're needed to just be able to minister. And uh, it's really from 9 to 19. From 9 to 19, that's the target group, uh, age group. Amen. With that said, we're going to turn things over now to our music ministry. Let them bless you with an A and B selection. And then we're coming back with the Gospel of St. Luke. God, amen, preach his word. All right.
do know right before we give the benediction, we uh, have another announcement that need to be made as it relates to the women's retreat that's coming up and we'll give way to Sister Alicia Daniels for a few minutes and then we'll make our way on downstairs for breakfast. Once again, we want to thank each and every one of you, those of you that can you all give me just a little bit more volume in the floor monitors, the pulpit monitors. We want to thank you all for supporting us on last Sunday as we uh, teamed up with St. Matthew's, amen, in the uh, joint uh, sunrise service. And I, I believe the Lord was very gracious and, amen, blessed us with, with good attendance and a good spirit. St. Luke chapter 1. Amen. We want to thank God for these preachers. Amen. Their, their loyalty and their devotion. We thank God for them. Those that come at 11. Those that come at 745 and stay at 11. God has blessed our church with, amen, evangelists as well as gospel preachers. And uh, there's nothing we enjoy more than every now and then as a pastor sliding out of the way. Amen. I could be selfish and preach all 52 Sundays if the Lord give me health, but they taught me, amen, that one of our jobs as pastors is to help others, amen, develop their gifts, amen, and as long as they know ain't but one rooster. <laughs> I can tease with them every now and then, you <laughs> I had to remind him, ain't one rooster around here now. <laughs> ain't but one voice. Ain't but one voice. I always remember that. Ain't but one voice you need to pay attention to overall. Over. They, they help compliment me. They help compliment, amen, what I preach and I teach, and I thank God for that. But at the end of the day, you'll catch it when you get home. Ain't but one voice. Hallelujah, somebody. St. Luke chapter 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were our witnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. I'll stop right there and the story continues to move forward. Yes, sir. Sister Phoenix, one of our youth uh, ministers, we want to bring from those four verses and others the subject in one word, whereas. Whereas. Just one word from those verses and some others I hope to give you in this brief 25 to 30 minute sermon. Whereas, union saints of God, I dare say that most of us at one time or another have attended a function, a program of some sort whereby persons were being honored, even like Dr. Pitts was honored a few nights ago. And somebody would come forth and present a proclamation, a written document, where they would be honoring that certain person. And every statement on that document would start out with the word, Whereas, and they would stand there and read sentence by sentence. They would stand there and read, whereas, 
Dr. David L. Stanley, so forth and so on. Whereas, so forth and so on. Whereas, until they got to the end, and then it would be signed and sealed by the appropriate person who was presenting that document. Webster defines whereas as a preamble in taking consideration of the facts and accomplishments to be listed or stated. Whereas a preamble into taking in consideration the facts and accomplishments that will be listed or stated thereof. So I thought with that word, whereas, as it relates to oftentimes men and women like you and myself being honored, that we would come forth this morning and we would honor none other than the Prince of Prince, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lord, none other than Jesus the Christ. My brothers and sisters, let the record show. Y'all gonna help me? They helped me last Sunday. I know y'all gonna help me. Yeah, yeah. Let the record show that we are living in some critical times. We're living in some dangerous times. We're living in days that I thought I would never see in my lifetime. And that tells me that the Antichrist is right around the corner. And so it behooves us to once and for all establish who and what we believe in. Many people go to church year after year but at the end of the day have no idea what they really believe, even as they call themselves Christians. Let the record show that at some point, every man and every woman is going to have to make a decision about God. I can't make it for you. You're going to have to make your own decision as it relates to whether you believe there's a God somewhere or if there is no God. And then at some point, you're going to have to make another tough decision. You're going to have to make a decision whether or not you believe this book is really the word of God or not. This Bible is not a menu where you just pick and choose out of it what you like. Did you hear what I said? This ain't no menu. This ain't Burger King up here. This is God's word telling us how to live, telling us what God accepts and what God does not accept. It don't matter what the White House say. It don't matter what, ain't, ain't Trump selling the Bible? It don't matter what Trump say. It don't matter what the governor say. Whatever is in this book, Hey Amen. You're going to have to make up your mind as to whether or not you believe in it. And one thing you can't do, and I've shared this story a hundred times. When I was a little boy and I took my little 20 cent into the corner store when I was nine and ten years old. Hey Amen. We would be playing baseball and basketball. We played all day. That's all we had back in them days. And every now and then we'd take a break and go to the little corner store. It was right across the street from Birdell Playground. And I go in there and get me a honey bun and a double cola. Yeah, they had a drink back then called double cola. Hallelujah. Son. I wanted all I could get for my seven cent. Yeah, yeah. And you be outside resting and talking. You just catching your breath so you can go back to playing. I'll be eat my honey bun and drink in my double coat. And every now and then you turn your head a flower with light on it. Yeah. 
You know I ain't gonna throw that whole hundred bone away. I don't know about y'all. Y'all look at me like y'all crazy or not. I just tear that little piece off and kept right on working. Hallelujah, somebody. You ain't gonna make me throw them. But now watch this. If that same fly were to fall off into a drink or something, at that point you consider the whole drink contaminated. You don't take no spoon and dip the fly out. No, no, you just, you just pour it away. But that honey bun, talk to me somebody. You don't get my whole honey bun. No, I'm gonna just tear off that little piece you lit on. And I'm gonna finish this baby. Hallelujah. And you got a whole lot of folk now, they are taking the honey bun approach to the Bible. They trying to tear off little pieces of it. I don't agree with this. Tear that off. I don't agree with that. Tear that off. No, it's either all good or it's all bad. Hallelujah, somebody. And so at some point, as children of God, as human beings, we're going to have to ante up and accept the Bible for what it is. It's not a menu. It's not a honey bun where you tear pieces off of it. So I thought with Luke, addressing this person of nobility. We don't know all there is to know about Theophilus. And we have no idea as to why Luke addressed the gospel to him first and then to the saints at whole. Perhaps Theophilus was somebody uh, of nobility that was inquiring about who Jesus was. And Brother Luke wanted to make sure that Theophilus knew this man, Jesus, and knew what Jesus accomplished. And so he begins his gospel by addressing Theophilus and telling him that I have taken the time out to write the story about Jesus. And so I'm going to give us a few, a few whereases. Then we'll take our seat. I can hear, amen, Luke uh, in chapter 1, verse 26 through 33. I can hear him saying, whereas Jesus was born of a young virgin lady by the name of Mary. And Theophilus, this birth gave him the distinction of being the only human being that was ever brought into this world without the help of a man. And not only that, Theophilus, whereas he was born of a virgin, it gave him the power to be called the Son of God. But Theophilus, I'm not through. Whereas at the age of 30, this man, Jesus, was baptized in a dirty Jordan River by his cousin, John the Baptist, after which the Holy Ghost, amen, fell upon him in the form of a dove, and he went forth doing his father's will. Not once, Theophilus, did this man, Jesus, commit a transgression. He was able to live from zero to his death, and not once did he do anything that was displeasing to his father. St. Luke chapter 3, verses 21 through 22, bears record that at the age of 30, Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River, but Theophilus, I'm not through. According to Luke chapter 22, verses 1 through 6, amen, he called 12 men whom he called his disciples and he trained them in love and in integrity. He deposited his spirit into their life that they might carry on the work, amen, that he wanted them to carry on. But unfortunately, Theophilus in Luke 22, 1 through 6, one of the disciples named Judas Iscariot 
amen, betrayed him, sold him for 30 pieces of silver. I've been asked, taking a moment of detour, I've been asked, Reverend Stanley, what was the difference? You preached a few weeks ago, amen. You talked about all the things that happened the last night of Jesus' life. And you talked about how Judas betrayed him and how Peter denied him. What was the difference between Judas not being forgiven and Peter who was forgiven. Well, here it is, saints of God. This might not be all of it, but this will help you out. Judas conspired with the enemies of Christ. Peter just had a moment of weakness. Peter had a good heart. He loved Jesus. And for one moment, he was afraid that he would be killed. But he redeemed himself. Whereas Peter, Judas would slip away in the midnight hour and converse with the enemies of Christ. That's the difference between Judas and Peter. Peter never went to Jesus' enemies and gave them information. Peter never went to Jesus' enemies and conspired to betray him. Peter never had a conversation with the enemies of Jesus, whereas Judas would slip away in the midnight hour and go and shake hands with the enemy. Whereas Luke 22, 1 through 6, clearly says that the devil entered Judas and caused him to betray Christ. Then according to St. Luke, chapter 23, 13 through 24, we have another whereas. Whereas uh, after he was turned over to Pilate, they began to give him a false trial. And Pilate, fearing a man that the crowd would vote him out, sent us an innocent man to death. Oh, pray for Pilate. Pity Pilate. Don't ever take after Pilate. If you know right from wrong, don't let anybody force you into doing wrong. Stand on your convictions. Pilate knew that Jesus was an innocent man, but he was afraid that he would lose out on the next election. My brothers and sisters, if there's anything that we can learn from Pilate, that he is, don't, amen, go against your own conscience. Don't go against what you know is true. If you have to stand all by yourself, stand. Y'all ain't talking to me. I said, if you have to stand by yourself, stand. Don't worry about no, pos uh, no position. Don't, don't worry about popularity. Stand on the truth. Amen. I'd rather die for the truth than to live for a lie. Somebody ought to say hallelujah in here. Whereas Pilate, amen, suffered the pressure of the entire crowd, fearing for his position, According to St. Luke chapter 23, 13 through 24, he turned Jesus over and signed the crucifixion papers. And then, my brothers and sisters, there's yet another whereas after Pilate sentenced Jesus to death, they marched him to a hill called Calvary. And there they crucified him among two thieves but I'm so glad something took place right before Christ died right before he died he saved one of those thieves and told him his sins are forgiven that's why we ought not to ever try to put anybody in hell one thing I don't do at a funeral is try to put anybody in hell I might try to help you get to heaven. Hallelujah, somebody. But I'm not going to put anybody. I don't care how much dope they sold. 
I don't care how many women they chase. I don't care how many I, <laughs> I don't care how many outside children they might have. I don't care how much liquor they might have drunk. I don't care who they might have cut and shot at. I ain't gonna put nobody in hell because if there's one thing that thief story tells me, God can save you right before you die. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. Somebody ought to say thank you, Lord, for being merciful. Some of y'all ought to be dead right now. Some of y'all don't know how you got home. You just woke up the next morning on the floor and said, I don't know how I got home. But thank God he looked beyond your faults and saw your need. I know you've been in the church all your life, but you still done done some devil, man. I know you've been in the church all your life, but you done still been a hell raiser. I know you done been in the church all your life, but you still been on the backside of Atlanta praying that nobody would catch you. Hallelujah, somebody. Go on and give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Oh, y'all better hear me. Y'all better hear me this morning. Whereas they sent us your Jesus. And mind you, and then I'm glad Jesus did one more thing. Right before he died, Dr. Sinclair, he looked down and saw all them rascals who had betrayed him. He looked down and saw all them liars, all them ditch diggers just waiting on him to die. And he cried out, Father! Oh, y'all ain't gonna like this. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And here's how you know you really getting close to Christ when you can forgive somebody who's sure enough done you wrong. That's when you know you're getting, but watch this. I've learned down through the years just because you forgive a person don't mean you have to let them sit on the front porch. Yeah, yeah. Keep, keep them out in the yard. See, I grew up in the neighborhood. I grew up in the neighborhood when all the houses had big porches. Yeah, and, and, and you know what? I think that's one thing that's missing in the neighborhood now. Amen. In, in the cool of the evening, amen. Them old, them old sisters, them old African American sisters, them grandmamas and them, around seven o'clock, seven thirty, when it didn't get dark, the nine, they'll go out on the front porch, and they had a hot shot spray can. for the mosquitoes. Huh, they, shh, shh, shh. They kept, then they had a snuff can where they spit their snuff in. And then they had a transistor radio about the size of your hand. They'd be listening to the braves. And then they had a fan. And then they would be watching all the children. Because we'd be out in the yard and out in the street playing dodgeball. And then you had to run out the street when the car came. Y'all, y'all, those were the good old days. We'd be out in the middle of the street playing dodgeball, praying that no car would come. But then when we saw the car coming, we pull aside, car go by, everybody waving at everybody, everybody speaking to everybody. Man, those were the good old days. Hallelujah. Now, how did I get down? I don't know. <laughs> Back to my whereas. Yeah, I know how I got down. Jesus said, forgive them. For they know not what they do. So here it is. When you forgive a person, that simply means you're not going to seek revenge. You will snatch them out of a burning building. You won't let them burn up. You will pull them out of a ditch. Amen. But at the same time, you're going to keep them out in the yard. They don't get to come back up on the porch anymore. Hallelujah. And I'm talking about your heart. The porch of your heart. Amen. You don't let a snake bite you twice. Hallelujah, somebody. But then there's another whereas. After 
he hung his head and died. After he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. But I'm so glad that that's not how the story ends. I, I'm so glad the whereas that was in St. Luke chapter 23 yeah. verses 26 through 35 yeah. is not the end of the story. Yeah. But there's one more whereas. Yeah. Whereas number six according to St. Luke chapter 24 yeah. verses 1 through 12 yeah. I can hear brother Luke talking to Theophilus and he said whereas after they crucified him they placed him in a borrowed tomb he stayed there all day Friday oh shucks y'all he stayed there look at bro Gibson smiling he stayed there all day Saturday but then early Sunday morning the first day of the week came some women Mary Magdalene Joanna and others to anoint his body but when they got to the grave the tomb had been rolled away and they looked in and saw a man clothed in white garments and he said to them I know whom you seek yeah but he is not here for he has risen now go and tell the disciples that he yet lives and I can hear brother Luke telling Theophilus that he is the gospel and that he is what we preach and that he is uh, what we write and so here it is union I can't speak for you and you can't speak for me I can't believe for you and you can't believe for me but I can tell you what Joshua said Joshua said as for me and my house we will serve the law ain't the Lord all right it's personal I said it's personal you got to know him for yourself you got to call him for yourself so here's my whereas my whereas is a long time ago Jesus came into my heart he gave me joy he gave me peace he gave me sanctification and whereas I've been serving him for over 37 years I ain't got tired yet and whereas I believe I keep on running and see what the end gonna be because my Bible tells me one more thing it says whereas one day he's coming back again he's gonna separate the sheep from the goats I want to be in that number I want to be with the sheep I want to go back to heaven and be with Jesus forever ain't he all right do you know him do you have any whereas every now and then you ought to wake up in the morning with your own whereas whereas I was sick and the doctor gave me up but Jesus showed up and healed my body whereas I was broke and couldn't pay my bills but somehow the law made a way out of no way and whereas I had some enemies on my trail but I heard David say he prepares a table in the presence of my enemies and whereas he walks with me he talks with me and whereas when I get happy I can cry 
clap glad hands I can pat my feet and whereas I'm going to keep on praising him I'm going to praise him because when the praises go up the blessings come down ain't he alright have you tried him can you say yeah can you say hallelujah he's alright Born of a virgin, baptized in the Jordan River, crucified on a Friday afternoon, but early Sunday morning, got up with all power. Hold on to your faith, no matter what you stumble across on Facebook. No matter what you stumble across, I got word that there's a powerful mega church in North Carolina called Elevation or something of that nature. And I was told that they didn't want to offend anybody on Easter Sunday morning. So they were not going to even talk about per se Calvary and the resurrection because they wanted folk to feel comfortable. Let me say something and I'm going to my seat. The gospel is supposed to offend people. The gospel is supposed to convict people and make people recognize if I don't get my life right, I'm going to end up in hell. But here's what the Bible taught me. Do it in love. Tell people the truth. But tell them in love. Show them. That's what Jesus did. I modeled my ministry after Jesus. When Jesus needed to correct people, he did it. But he did it in love. He did it with compassion. And that made people want to change. If you beat up on folk all the time, you would make people worse just by beating up on them. Tell them in love what thus said the Lord. And I guarantee you, they'll be even more willing to turn their life around. On your feet, on your feet. Thank you, Lord. The doors of the church are open. So good to see so many of you out this morning. So good to see you. Do we have a candidate for baptism? Do we have somebody want to come to Jesus?
downstairs for breakfast but just uh, stop by and get some information especially if you have children from zero on up to 19 we want to be about our father's business we want to help whoever we can amen amen oh yeah <laughs> you can you know you keep sitting Tell us what you want to say. First of all, I want to say I thank God for letting me get back to church. Amen. Amen. And I always thank everybody for their prayers and their call. And it's what I want to say is my cousin had told me that I had been, I see you for like two weeks. And the third week came, and um, the doctor had um, came in there and just um, tried to wake me on up and everything, and just, you know, and so I think that third week came, and that, um, I woke up, and you was over me when I woke up. Yes. And I was, I remember what you were trying to say. What I was trying to say, I was trying to tell you. I was trying to tell you what happened. That's what I was trying to tell you. Amen. Amen. Give Sister Odom. Amen. Sister Odom. I stood over her quite a bit in the intensive care, unable to respond and get nothing but bad news. But as time progressed, as we continued to pray and continued to trust in the Lord, and I remember that, that day when you opened your eyes and you were so excited and you wanted to just try to tell it all, but... And I just calmed you and said, don't, don't worry about that. You'll have plenty of time to do that. So good to see how far the Lord done brought you. Amen. Amen. She has been a faithful member of Union Baptist since she was a little girl. Probably over, over 50 years or so. Amen. A, a, a little less, a little longer. But uh, her family grew up in this church across the street. And we thank God for you. We thank God that you're one of those where ass is that we can keep talking about. Amen. Dr. Pick, talk to us. Uh, I just want to solicit the church in prayer because I've been putting off the knee operation. They put it off one time. I put it off. I got upset because they put it off, but it's going down April the 12th, and I just want the church to pray. I'm Amen. confident, but I just want to talk. Amen. You hold your seat. Amen. One of our members, Paul Moore, you, you, you can continue to sit down. We, yeah, we want you to take it easy. Amen. One of our members, uh, Brother Paul Moore, is recuperating from, from knee surgery. Lewis Foster. Amen. Okay, Brother Lewis Foster getting ready to do surgery. Okay. Knee, knee okay. It's a lot of knee surgery that's been going on lately with, with, with everybody. Amen. I guess... Uh, we put pressure and so forth. And you can't take it for granted. You can't take it for granted. When, when they put you to sleep and start cutting on you, you can't persons that sit before us. Sister Odom, who is nothing but a living testimony. God, we thank you for her life. Because we were told she wasn't going to make it. But here she is sitting before us live right around the corner from the church we thank you for her and we 
we pray you will continue to strengthen her in body, soul, and spirit. Lift her up, prop her up, and she'll continue to give you the praise. And then, Father, we put Dr. Pick before you as he make ready to go have knee surgery, and we don't take it lightly. We pray now that you would just surround him with your love and your power. And we pray when it comes that time that his surgeons will be at their best. That you will guide their hands second by second and minute by minute. That he'll have a complete and successful surgery. And in a few hours after the surgery, we pray that Brother Peck will open up his eyes. And he'll see the smile and face of his wife and children. And he'll see the smile and face of the doctors and nurses telling him all is well. We pray for Brother Foster and others who might be on their way to surgery also. Keep us all in your care, Father. We belong to you. We belong to you. And we pray, our Father, that you'll forever surround us by your love and power. It is in the precious marvelous and sweet name of none other than Jesus the Christ and all of God's children said amen amen go in peace go in peace so, sister Alicia Daniels is coming now and she's going to make an announcement that's very important to the ladies of our church We're going to go down there and just enjoy ourselves. And so y'all don't have to rush when you go downstairs for breakfast. Just take your time. You, 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 you don't have to gobble the food down when you go downstairs. Just take your time. And, and in fellowship, we know. We know. Come on. Come on. All right. All right. I know y'all ready to eat. I am too. I ain't get up this early for nothing. Y'all know I'm crazy, right? But anyway, I love y'all. Good morning, Union. I love my church family, even though we all have disagreements, but I love y'all. I just want to say that. Anyway, the Deaconess Ministry is getting ready to present our annual women's retreat. I have standing with me, Sister Flowers, Erica Smith. I have solicited some members from the congregation to assist us with this, because the Deaconess, I don't want you guys to feel like it's just us making the decisions. We are getting ready to have the retreat. It will be September the 19th through the 21st. And September. September. September 19th through the 21st. In Delonica. Delonica, Georgia. She have to help me pronounce that word, honey. I know I was a school teacher, but I don't know everything. <laughs> um. It's going to be at the Forest Hills Mountain Resort. There are only 50 seats available. First come, first serve. You just can't put your name down here if you ain't got no money. <laughs> All right. So you can see one of us uh, at your earliest convenience. We will start putting it on the screen because we won't be coming up because Reverend Stanley ain't going to let us. <laughs> But the cost is $380 per person, non-refundable, and transportation. Notice I said meals with the S. That's all your food that we're going to eat there the, the time that we are there. Three people per room. The first payment is due May the 5th. Uh, I know this seems like it's kind of late, but I'm sure you're probably asking yourself, why so late? Because... We wanted to let you guys get a break from the women's conference and not get the two confused. All right, so this is the women's retreat. $380, September the 19th to 21st. Uh, you can see us in the breakfast hall, I call it. <laughs> Downstairs, uh, if you want to go ahead and make that. We'll have checks and cash only. No cash out, no Zelle. No PayPal, none of that. <laughs> All right. Uh, once you sign up the first time and pay your deposit, we will give you a list, a, a date, a list of dates 
with the upcoming payment dates. So you will have until the end of August to make your payment. 50 people only, first come, first serve. All right, any questions, see one of us. Thank you so much. See y'all at breakfast. Ain't but one Alicia Daniels. Hallelujah, somebody. Now, you know what? Y'all stand. Lord, bless us. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the whereases. Now, consider yourselves dismissed. Get on out of here and go downstairs. Hallelujah.